computation as in uh, the topic called controller as a part of your logic so now we'll move into decision making right so decision making is where we are trying to decide a flow where to move for an example as an engineer if i come back from the office at 6 pm we'll go and watch a movie with the wife else we'll go tomorrow and tomorrow may not come so we have to come up and uh, you know do some decisions so how you will be doing these uh, decisions so where we need to implement if and else kind of keywords in our python programs okay so coming here let's see one of the programs so you got session number 2g okay so uh, i'm just gonna put up one check that i'm gonna first of all write one variable called transmission delay let us say that this this delay is for uh, some 120 seconds right so i need to come up and check that if a transmission delay is for uh, greater than one minute or 60 seconds i'm not gonna take it right so i'll just say if that transmission delay is greater than and equal to 60 so it means it's gonna touch down to one minute so i'll say print performance tuning required in the else case so i'm just taking some uh, you know use case in the else case performance tuning i'll just say all okay so guys what is this now right so if then you wrote one of the conditions now this condition will either yield true or false right so th there has to be either true or false on this condition part as we studied in our uh, conditional operators so we need performance tuning or we do not need performance tuning there may be a parameter on which you want to decide so with the help of if your code can go here so you can you can write your code snippet here but there has to be four space difference one two three four so we need to put up a tab and then we write the code all right so anything which must be executed under if block should be four spaces inwards now that's a rule right so python's rule so four spaces uh, over here means uh, one tab space so the tab on your keyboard so that you need to press then else we need to put a colon so there is no condition for the else part because there is only one single condition either the transmission delay is greater than or equal to 60 right or it is less than so for less than what you need to do once again you need to follow the same pattern right so we need to come up and uh, make sure anything which must be executed under else block should be four spaces and four spaces is equivalent to one tab so guys i hope this part is clear to everyone now what is if and else and how we need to integrate it so is internet uh, let's say enabled so I'll write down this as true so I'll say is GPS enabled so this becomes true all right now we, we consider in our phones right so in our phones uh, there is a setting option so you can enable or disable internet and GPS so I'll say if is internet enabled now the value of this guy itself is either true or false <coughs> So if always needs something which will be true or false. So I can uh, further say if is GPS enabled. Now this is known as if within the if or you can say nested if right. So this is a normal if else a normal if else 
whereas uh, uh, now what we are doing is we are doing a nested if else so there can be condition testing within the conditions itself so guys now if is internet enabled and if is gps enabled i can say print you can navigate using google maps right so here our core logic can come in what what we need to do in this else situation here i'll uh, put up a print statement so i can say turn on gps and try again now there can be one more else here so this goes like a print statement where we're gonna print turn on internet and try again so we we got this uh, condition within the condition so you are checking a couple of conditions so they are nested in between and uh, this is how you can make up a result now if you run the code so this says you can navigate using Google Maps in case you turn off the GPS, right? So in case you turn off the GPS and uh, run the program here. So it says turn on GPS and try again. Why? Internet was enabled, but GPS was disabled and hence it came into the else block. So guys, this is something which we need to understand in a very very better approach because this is the core logical statements which you'll be using in almost all of your logics now in case i disable the internet itself right so if is internet false then the else block will be executed so it will say turn on the internet and try again so guys can i get one smiley as an acknowledgement are we clear till here So let us take one more use case to log in to a router you need an I, I you need a user id and a password let's say right so you need an id and a password so there is a, a username so this username goes like john at some example.com and there is a password which goes like password one two three so if username is equal to john at example.com print username okay in the else case we'll say print invalid username all right so let us try to uh, execute the code once again so i'll just come up here and put some print statements so run the code so username okay now i can even put up one and condition and password should be equal to password one two three now when you run the code so it says username okay so i can say username and password okay invalid username or password so when you run the program here it says username and password okay so what do you want to do next that we can code here at line number 33 then at line number 34 we can uh, say print welcome to home right so we can uh, uh, do whatever we want right so you write the code in the if block so username and password okay welcome to home the moment this username changes any one changes because we are on the and condition it says invalid username or password now we don't know what is wrong so either the username may be uh, wrong or the password may be wrong so that's why we came up with this else block here so once again acknowledgement awaited from all of you guys i want everyone should be able to understand this uh, if else in a better way no room for us that we should be unable to follow this concept here Ishan, yes. just one thing might be it's we are going to discuss in future that because username password you defined there just to validate that. Yes, yes. It's hard coded. It's hard coded. Let's suppose we want a variable input here, the dynamic input which we took in integer and string, like the input thing. Yes. So so we can do that. Exactly. So let's let's do it then right away. So enter username. 
right so i'll just say enter username and for this password let us say enter password but i am doing a hard code check right so you are making sure that the username should be this and password should be this this is a hard code check so if, if there is a database or let's say if there is a cloud connectivity from where you are going to fetch the usernames and passwords and validate it that's a separate logic so as of now you are taking the input from the user but uh, this is a hard code check right so i can write down here it's a hard code check so we're not validating from the databases so that that's the only concern so enter the username so i'll say john at example.com enter the password let's say password one two three it says username and password okay welcome to home yep. all you. right great so uh, now let us uh, try to create some uh, other part of if else so we say it as letter of if else now in letter of if else so i want uh, to do some customizations right so if user has uh, logged in perfectly fine and uh, there can be some rules right so there can be some rules some authorizations uh, or i can say there are some user types right so there is uh, a user type now a user type may be uh, one which means uh, we'll, we'll write down we'll write down here so one means uh, this guy is uh, super admin and uh, two means that this guy is uh, admin so we are just considering some of uh, the numbers so three means that this guy is a user right so we got three of these uh, types the user types so they, there is a user type called one right so if your user type is equal to one print welcome home super admin so l if user type is equal to two then i can say welcome home admin then i can say l if user type is equal to three so we can put up a print statement and say welcome home user and in my else case i can simply say print invalid user type so we, we can take this input again from the user right so as of now guys uh, no concerns here so i can say select your role as a user and if you want uh, you can even uh, uh, write some more print statements uh, like this right so one for super admin two for admin so on and so forth so you run the code here uh, so it says enter username yes of course so i'll say john and pass so it says invalid so enter your uh, select your role as a user so i'll say my role is number two hit enter it says welcome home admin so this is known as ladder of if else where you know that more than one conditions are supposed to be validated so even we can fuse these uh, things together but uh, individually please give a review on these so what i'll do is i'll try to share the code over the chat so I've shared the code over the chat. You can just copy and uh, see if everything is fine at your end. If the code snippets are perfectly fine. So you have any queries, you can ask. So three different ways to use if and else. The first one is a normal if else or a regular if else. So I can say normal slash regular of if else. Then we got a nested if else. Then we got a letter of if else, more than one conditions. So guys, please, all of you, review and let me know if we are clear till here. So, Vinay, Arvind, Asim, Deepak, Lalit, Pradeep and Saurabh, guys, are we all clear till here? wonderful wonderful so let us try to write a program so we will we'll specifically try to see uh, we will take the input from the user as an ip address and we'll try to tell whether this ip address belongs to class b or class c or not right so let us try to write certain kind of a program 
So uh, session 2H. So I'm going to take one IP address as input from the user. So enter an IP address. So user is going to enter an IP address. And uh, uh, I'll simply say you entered comma IP address so we, we are displaying what the user has entered so program is very basic so run the program enter an IP address right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say 128.1.1.1 so you entered 128.1.1.1 now for IP addresses we have various different classes right so all of you might be more aware of that part than me so I'm just taking a Google reference for all these things so uh, there is a uh, class B so I think uh, as per this 128.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0, uh, 2 this is 191.255.255.255 guys I hope this is a uh, correct specification for class B and uh, there is uh, another one for class C so here I have in the reference as 192.0s and it goes till 223 right so these are some of uh, the specifications so you have it for class A class B class C class D class E right so so we're just taking some reference now I want to come up and uh, check whether the IP address falls under this range or not all right so uh, my major concern will be to first of all check that the user should enter 128 to 191 so it means uh, uh, that will be for class B and 192 to 223 will be for class C so I need to come up and tell the user that if you have entered an IP address to which class this IP address belongs all right so the first part will be to extract the first three characters which the user has entered now in order to extract first three characters right so I'll say first three cars is IP address of 0 colon 3 so we call this slicing so this is known as slicing so 0 colon 3 means uh, begin from 0th index till 2nd index. So we will start from 0th index and we will go till 2nd index. So guys uh, this is the 0th index. Then this is the 1st index. This is the 2nd index. So we will be able to extract that. So I will now say print your first three characters are so we'll come here and say print down comma so I'm just uh, uh, doing this thing for the sake of design nothing more than that so we'll write down this first three cas right so the data which we have entered so we'll see for the first three cas how it's gonna come up for me so I'll say 129.0.0.0 hit enter so your first three cas are 129 it means we are able to get the data in a perfect way right so we have extracted these first three values but uh, this is not mathematics right so if I try if I will try to print the type of first three cas so this will be textual type even though you have entered the data as uh, or you are able to see the data as some number but the type is string the textual type why because uh, whatever you are writing on your console here so this becomes string so this was the string and whatever you extracted was again a string so you need to understand right so whatever we are giving as an input on console 
is always a string. So we need to convert textual that is uh, string data into corresponding mathematical type as you need it as per your requirement right so as per your requirement you need to do that so what i'll do is i'll i'll uh, convert the first three characters into integer right so i'll i'll say this guy has uh, uh, a number which is an integer and i'll pass the first three cats right so what is this this is converting str to int so now if i'll say print me number is comma number comma type of number right same way i can say first three cars is so now let us uh, try to run the program and uh, see if we have converted it uh, clearly or not so i'll just give some space here okay so 129.0.0.1 so we see we entered 129 so this was string the first three characters uh, uh, which we extracted was 129 right and uh, that was string but the number is 129 which is integer so guys still here are we all clear can i get a smiley from all of you uh, Ishan, one thing. Yes. We are converting that into integer because when we are going to implement if and else yes. uh, logic, we are not going to apply the operator correctly. Is it right? Exactly. Operators, they are going to work on mathematical point, right? Not on textual okay. data. So 129 was string. You cannot compare yep. strings, but you can compare the mathematical data. So we converted it into the integer. Correct understanding. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Now, what I'll do is, I'll simply put up a range. So, I'll say if the number is greater than, so I, I got this 128 and 191. So, should be greater than equal to 128 and number should be less than equal to 191. This is my first if, right? So, I can say print class B I P address. And I can uh, uh, even come here, put comma IP address is class B IP address, right? So this, this way, I am substituting this uh, uh, IP address which we entered. Now there can be an elif. So for an elif, so I can uh, put this 192 and uh, 223. So we can say this is a class C IP address, right? And here I can put up one else and I can say print invalid IP address as per our requirements. So this is, this is how we can uh, come up and do this part. So let us now try to run this program and uh, see if it's going to work for us. So I'll give some uh, 195.0.0.0. So it's say 195.0.0 is class C IP address, right? So you run the code here and you say 190, uh, not 190. So let's say 129.0.0.2. So it says it's a class B IP address. So guys, I hope what is if else and uh, what operators can do for us that is very well clear to us now right now this is not just one way of dealing right so this is just one of the logical ways how we have uh, you know segregated the classes so you need to uh, write down this small homework as your first assignment so the assignment goes like finish off the above program gracefully so when i say the term gracefully it means keep in mind all of the checks which are required to validate 
whether the IP address is a correct IP address to a corresponding uh, class or not. So good to go guys. Once again a smiley expected from all of you in case we are good to go till here. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> so now uh, the next part is iterations or the loops and and guys i just wanted to know one more point from all of you are we keeping the correct pace are you finding the speed uh, of the program perfectly fine or you are finding it that it is a bit faster we should slow down or it is a bit slow we should fast go on a more pace anyone who would like to tell me any inputs if if the pace of the program is perfectly fine if you need to increase or decrease it Sean, actually we are beginner to the programming so we will take that month as a slow just to take your assignment and apply it once we are okay then we can fast no no that, that's perfect. That so, yeah. so my so my, clean, my query is that you should be uh, feeling that as of now whatever i'm training whatever i'm teaching that is on a uh, okay pace right so that's not fast yeah that. actually one thing because arvind has never said mm. anything so i think the arvind will answer that question arvind are you there <laughs> can you answer So Arvin, uh, you you're not audible. So you need to go close to the mic. Okay, hi. Uh, so at some point you are uh, fast for me. It's my individual, uh, you know, uh, observation. Okay. Uh, so yeah, some of the points are you know just I need to think about it and calculate, and in the meantime you are going ahead. So that is that, that is see for me. see important point is what right? So I ask for acknowledgments. <clears throat> I ask that we are all good to go and then we proceed further. So if there are some of the concerns, you need to ask right away. Do not do not uh, wait for uh, that part. <clears throat> I would help. I would try my level best to help you guys. Okay, okay. Uh, in 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 this uh, in, in this uh, session, I I didn't understand the spaces you used, uh, right? So that I raised the query uh, earlier. <coughs> where where you use the tabs, uh, you know, state uh, spaces. Uh, tab spaces. Okay, here. Yeah. You're talking about here, right? Uh, so tab spaces goes here only. No, no, in the. Nested Where exactly? Nested if right Below then, uh, yeah, these is print four spaces. <clears throat> this one. So, means we need to press the uh, tab. So, what yeah, you do tab. is go here. So, it will automatically come up. You see, it's coming up automatically for you. But if you skip down, so it's like tab. So it's a syntactical approach and uh, this will come up once you have started coding, right? So you see, when I wrote this, so automatically four spaces came up here. And when I'm going to write down this if, so this will again be four spaces. Okay. Can you go a little bit uh, up? So here, not below. Yeah, this in, in in the code, uh, you you have anything which must be excluded under a block should be four spaces. Yes, okay. yes, yes, should be four spaces. Whatever should be executed as a part of if that should be four spaces. The moment you finish the four spaces, it means you are entering into the else region, and the moment you finished off the spaces here and you came down, it means that's a normal program thereafter. So from here onwards, it's a normal program. It's so line number 11 is not treated to be a part of else line number 12 not else 13 not else 14 15 these are all different lines so anything under the else should be four spaces inwards that that is a good question it's an indentation right and this is a grammatical or syntactical approach that how you write it and guys this query asked by Arvind 
so we uh, even call this as pep standard pep -E pep standard right so uh, how you should be writing it so uh, this is uh, python enhancement proposal uh, basically how this syntax should come up so you should be giving four spaces why four spaces right so these are some standards in python that you need to follow so in traditional languages we used to come up and write these uh, brackets like this so instead of writing these brackets so we we don't need to come up with these brackets you put a colon and you are done with it right so when this this becomes a part of syntax of course okay any any query here you are finding it uh, in a way of okay that what should be what Aishan, what should we use for uh, multi-line comment? Mm. Okay, so when you have to come up and uh, do a multi-line comment, so what you can do is you can come here and start with triple quotes and finish with triple quotes like this. All right, so start with three of the quotes and finish with three of the quotes. So this becomes a multi-line comment. Good to go. Yeah. So on the other way around, you can select these statements. You can say control slash, control slash to comment, control slash to uncomment. That is uh, one more way of dealing with the comments. All right. So shall we proceed now? Sarvin, till here we are all good to go, buddy? Yeah. Okay. So guys, you need to ensure. Now there is very simple thumb rule, right, which we need to follow. So we, we are not, we are, we are into a formal association, but we are not into that much formal association where you should be, you know, uh, con not considering of having your queries coming up. Okay, so when you have a query, you block me and let that query get resolved. Other way around, it's a loss for us, right? Why? We will be putting up the efforts, we'll be proceeding further. If you are stuck somewhere, due to that, the other things which we are discussing will not be clear for you people. So there are two th simple things. A doubt should be resolved, a query should be resolved. Secondly, what ever we are coding here from session number one to two h that you should certainly write as in when what i have written other than the assignments or the uh, you know parts which i'll uh, give so you should be able to write the same code snippets at least on your pie chart right so if, if we will not write the code there is a difference right and i'm watching a recipe over the television versus i'm cooking the recipe in the kitchen there's a difference so we need to ensure that uh, coding is something which will come by practice okay so much of a teacher or a lecturer kind of a, you know example but yes it is true indeed that till time you don't code you won't get so we, what I'm going to introduce now is uh, iterations or loops in Python so we got only two of them while and for consider I want to print some document so there is a document and uh, the document is named as uh, uh, my resume dot PDF so there is this you know document my resume dot PDF and I want to print this uh, PDF file for n number of times so I, I'll what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll take the n value as one, right? So it means this is the first copy, right? So copy, copy as one. Now while the value of copy is less than and equal to ten, so I'll say print printing comma document name on printer right 
so I'm I'm printing this uh, document name on printer and uh, copy number comma copy so you need to understand what I have written here in a bit more uh, detailed way then copy is uh, copy plus one I can even say copy plus assign one let us see what is this now now there's a document name called my resume dot PDF so I want to get 10 copies printed so there, there must be a way how we can do it programmatically so what I did I took a variable called copy with the value as 1 and I kept a check on the while so I said while copy is less than equal to 10 now this is the condition right so this condition will either give us true or false now till time copy is less than equal to 10 whatever you are writing in the while that will be executed automatically for us so guys so what and all will be printed so uh, this statement line number 8 will be executed it will say printing my resume dot pdf on printer and copy number 1 because the value of copy is 1 then you will increment the copy value by 1 so now the copy value will become 2 so again it will go into this and will now check that 2 is less than equal to 10. So yes 2 is less than equal to 10 will come into the loop again. We will print down this line then we will take the copy value from 2 to 3. Then 3 is less than equal to 10, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and the moment it becomes 11. So condition will not be satisfied and the code in your while will not be executed. So we need to understand whatever we have written in while block it will be executed till time condition matches or we can say uh, till time condition gives true as result so if I'll run this program here so you find uh, they, there is the same statement which is uh, running 10 times but with some uh, difference here. So printing my resume dot PDF on printer. So copy number one, copy number two, so on and so forth. So guys, is this part clear to everyone? How this while loop will work? So, so again, once again, tab will define the number of spaces four spaces will define what should be there as a part of while so if i'll say print thank you so this will not be the part of my while loop right so when i run the code so thank you gets printed only once in the end so why because uh, a below statement is out of the while block so arvind i hope uh, this gets more clearer now right Alright, so others? So it is automatically taking that space when we are scrolling down in the while block. Yes, exactly. You see, it will automatically take up that. So PyCharm will help us to, you know, write a better code. So we, we you know, produce less errors and uh, this is how it's going to work for us. So Ishan, uh, in, in if else we use else to come out of the loop, uh, so in case of no others, no no there uh, is no loop in if else so we need to understand so there is no loop no, in if else just coming out of the condition we yes yes to come, to come out of the condition but in case of a while loop so uh, do we have some mechanism or simply we just come out of the loop and print anything uh, okay the way you so these are print. these are not I got your question so these are not two different concerns here so when I say if and else it's a decision making thing right so what what does this mean now it means that in case the traffic on the road is high I will take a separate path the, than the usual one right so when I say if else we are making a decision either this or that you need to understand what is this if and else so it's a decision whether I should do this or that but when it comes to iteration or loops it is doing something again and again right for an example, when I have to come up and uh, go to this Amazon 
www.amazon.com and I'll search for some product, right? So let me uh, come up with this. So we'll search for this iPhone X, right? So let's search for this part here. Now when I'm writing this iPhone X here, so same thing gets repeated again and again. So typically the data is getting modified. So something is getting modified, right? So you are getting the same thing. It's a loop now. It's a loop. So it, it's not a decision. It's a loop now. So loop has a condition and a single condition. Automatically when this condition is met, it will be terminated. So in the if you have an other part, in the while loop, you have only one single point. I'll execute till this condition is met. So I'll drive from city A to city B. So that's the condition. We are done with it. So there is no, no uh, logical decision making here. So good to go uh, Asim now. All right. Yes. Yes. So uh, moving ahead with this while loop. So we have one more way of dealing with the iterations. We got it for loop. So I'll say for. So I'll, I'll now say for i in range 1 to 11. So guys, the way you were writing while loop, in a similar way, I'm writing this for loop. <clears throat> the only thing is this, you need not to come up and do an increment here. Right, so it will automatically increment by one. So I'll say copy number i. So here you got this guy called i, or it can be any name, right? So this can be any name of your choice. So I'm typically taking it as i. So range one to eleven means it will go from one to ten with an increment of one. So if you run this program once again now, or what I'll do is I'll just uh, change the name of the document. So let's say document name is. Uh, learning python dot pdf so you run the program so what you see is printing learning python dot pdf on printer copy number one to ten so same thing right the only difference is uh, synthetically you got a different way of doing the things so here we were writing three statements and here we are writing just two lines of code and you are done with it now if i'll say instead of copy plus assign one i'll say copy plus assign two it means that if you will perform this operation it will be one three five seven and nine why because you are incrementing by two same way in the for we can come up with one step like this or we can say increment by two so by default this guy is one and if you say comma two so this means that we are going to increment by two. So two different ways to create a loop. And when I say a loop, it means do the same task repeatedly again and again till time condition will not meet. So for over here will work with the range function and while works uh, manually more more kind of manually uh, yes sort of we are definitely doing that that range and record we are manually putting it can we specify time here also if we going to extend it means that program um, you want that uh, for this range we schedule, should schedule it like I want to do that repetitive process after two minutes, three minutes. Yes, we can, we, can yeah, we can condition. do that. We can do that. We can do that. We can do that. So we, we got some other functions which will produce a delay with the time, right? So for that, we'll just wait for some timing. Uh, we have we have the built-in functions. What they will do is they will introduce a delay. So that can be done. Sort of, of course, that can be done. Yeah, thank you. So guys, the loops here. So, uh, Ishan, uh, I have just ping uh, one of the programs for the for, uh, for loop. So in this case, I just want to understand in case I print bookshelf rather than the book, I get the same number of books printing uh, in each uh, 
row I, I can say I'm an uh, okay so you want you want that there are certain uh, uh, set of books right mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. you you want to print them so, so you have shared the course snippet so we'll take it as mm -hmm. a separate program no problem we'll take it as a separate program itself so first of all guys I want uh, one smiley from all of you till here if we are good to go with this uh, part here from everyone if we are good to go so then we'll write down one more program on uh, loops so uh, assume your query is gonna get resolved buddy here itself all right so session to J now consider I have uh, a list of IP addresses right so I got some IP addresses coming here so what I'll do is I'll take up this data from our one of our previous sessions so I got this multi-value container as routers so I'll just copy this list so I have these uh, one two three four and uh, let's say five so we, we got these uh, five different IP addresses or uh, let's say five different routers on five different IP addresses right now this is the list so in the list typically what's gonna happen we have indexing uh, technique so the first one is zero the next one is one then the two then this guy is three this guy is four all right now what I want is I want to uh, print the IP address of every router so I'll say print router at zero is comma routers of zero is on IP right so this is how I'll write down the code so guys uh, zero then I'll certainly come up and write the statements two three and four so zero one then 2, then 3, and then 4. And now when I will run the code here, so it says router at 0 is this 1, then 1 is this guy 20.2, 20.3, 20.4, and 20.5. Is this part clear to everyone? Uh, yes, Vinay, yes, of course. So inputs and all, they can be taken care in the same regards, right? That, that won't be a problem. Now, what is the observation here? So what is the observation or challenge? So the challenge is when the list of routers will increase, right? So manually, we have to write so much of code, right? So what is the challenge here? The main challenge which we have to uh, face is that you need to write certain lines of code so other way around what i can do i can say for i in range 0 2 so i'll say length of routers now when i say length of routers so it will automatically give me the value 5 all right so it will give me the value 5 so even you can say 5 or the other way around is i can say give me till the length of routers right so i'll say the same statement now you need to observe how I'm writing it. Router at i. So router at i is routers of i. So instead of writing these uh, lines of code, so I am only writing a small single snippet which will be repeatedly printed with this help of a loop. So when I do a run on this, so it says router at 0 is, router at 1 is, 2 is, 3 is, 4 is. And those now, I think the purpose of loop should be clear. So the purpose of loop, right? So why we need to iterate? Why we need a loop? We need a loop when we know that we have a lot of data and we want to process it. At the same time, I can even say for router in routers. So print me router now this is one more way and we call this way as enhanced for loop so this works with multi-value containers okay i think we have a query coming in 
So I can be any name over here uh, seen. So it's a variable, right? It's a variable. So this can be anything for any, right? So you do use any over here. So, so Ishan, it should be predefined or uh, uh, it is dynamic. I mean, the moment we define it into a for loop, that it is created in the memory. Yes, the moment you define it, then it is created in the memory. So when for will start, I will be created in the memory. When for will for will finish, I will be finished. All right. So guys, uh, there is one more way of coming up with a loop. We call it enhanced for loop. Now what will happen? Automatically, data in the list will be copied into router one by one. All right. So this is uh, uh, one more way of dealing with it. So you see the list of routers is coming up for me automatically here. Uh, no, no, here Vinay, so I should not be given any value. So by default, I will be zero first, then one, then two, then three, then four. Right, so here I will be zero, one, two, three, four automatically. Just in case if someone, someone uh, put the value of i earlier in program as 5, shouldn't this start from 5? Yes, it will start from 5. If you will say, no, no, here in this capacity here, so this is the initial value of i. So when I say range, 0, comma. So this is the initial value. If you say 5, comma, so this loop may not work. Right? Why? Because uh, they, there is... Uh, my, my concern is that uh, before the for, for loop, somewhere in the program, if somebody sets the value of i as a 5. That's or, not a problem. Or say 2. It's okay. Even if you say i is 5, when this loop, when the line number 14 will be executed, i will go as 0. Okay? So the value will okay, be Okay. It will initialize itself. Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. Good to go. Right? Okay, so Saurabh says, what is length? So length of routers, so length is a built-in function. So length is a built-in function. So what it will do? So it will return the value as 5. Why 5? Because you got uh, 5 uh, records over here in this routers list, right? So it, it, it is going to give me uh, uh, the value of the length of the list, right? So length of routers. So Saurabh, I hope this is clear. Wonderful. So enhanced for loop is uh, a bit more easier approach as compared to the loop here. So this way, synthetically, we keep on uh, uh, making the things easier for us in Python, right? So where you got a while loop, instead of while, you can go with the for. Instead of for, you can even come up with something known as uh, this guy over here, enhanced for. So synthetically, things become more easier for us. All right, so now uh, this is what we got for the day. So in my next session, I'm going to reintroduce loops. We will begin with the loops and then we'll proceed further on our next discussion, right? So we'll, we'll just revisit loops in some different angle and then we'll see them in a more different way, in some more detailed way. So typically, to uh, conclude, so we understood what is controller for the day, what computations can be done with the operators, how if-else can work and how we can do an iteration. So anyone having any query? So now we can uh, uh, come up and uh, discuss the queries and doubts, guys. Ishan? Yes, uh, Asim. Uh, Ishan, in this program, uh, if we uh, print routers rather than a router, the output would be a different. So what difference? If you uh, say if routers, make... now see, yes. what you're printing is routers. So what is routers? Routers is entirely a list, right? So it's, it's a list. Routers is a list. So it, it's going to give me five times the list. But if you will say router, so routers of zero is this value. So first of all, this value will be copied in the router. It will be printed. 
next time the first index value will be copied so this can be any name now right so once again this can be any name of your choice so uh, first of all zeroth index value will be copied into any name we are printing any name then first index will be copied then second then third then fourth it means whatever we were doing here as in routers of i that you need not to do so that is taken care automatically for you it is a much easier approach compared to the above for loop so good to go see no no what happens if we uh, i mean print routers so why uh, it is executing for five times because we are just uh, executing the routers uh, no now. it will We're execute not... five times why it will execute five times let me tell you right because this loop has to begin from the zero index till the last index now you are printing routers that is your logical bug so you are getting the value of router but you are not using it so in the loop you are not using this guy router okay so that is the challenge so you are not using router if you use router so you will be able to see the value and if you are printing routers or even if you come up here and print a smiley right so it has to be printed because the loop will work five times why the loop will work five times because there are five values in this routers from zero to four Yeah, Sim. Still, still, the query exists. So, uh, Nishant, is it kind of pointers we are using? Like, no, 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 no. Nothing, nothing like pointers. No, don't consider okay. pointers here. So, these are indexes. These are indexes, right? So, zero, one, two, three. So, indexing starts from zero to n minus one. It's a list indexing. Okay. The mathematical part itself, right? So, these are the data values. and uh, from 0 to n minus 1 so let's say there are five records in this list right so there are five elements if there are five elements will begin from 0 so 0 denotes the first element 1 denotes the second element and fourth denotes the last element which is the fifth element so for an example if there are 10 elements so it is going to print 10 times right I, exactly exactly if there are Ten elements. It's gonna print ten times, and it's gonna start from zero and end zero. into nine. Right? Indexing is zero to nine. Elements are ten. It is only with the list, or we can do it with a tuple and set also. You can do it with a tuple and list, but you cannot do it with the set and dictionary. Okay, so they are different kind of containers. So this indexing works on tuple and list, not on set and dictionary. Okay. So I'll write down here. so please see so indexing works on tuple and list all right so make sure that you don't apply it on set and uh, dictionary it's going to be an error so a same for your query buddy once again right i'll i'll try to come up and give one more attempt when you say for router in routers what will happen so we know the list is routers so first of all the first value will be copied in router you do whatever you want to do that's not the use case so what you are writing in for is your own choice right so whatever you want to code in the for loop it's your choice but when this loop is executed for the zeroth value then automatically the value at first index will be copied in router you do whatever you want to do then the second then the third then the fourth so this loop will automatically go from 0 to n minus 1 So zero to n minus one. What's the difference? The difference is you need not to manage the index, right? You don't manage indexes here in enhanced for loop. Okay. So any other queries, guys? Uh, Ishan, I have one. Yes, sir. Like uh, just to compare with the normal for or enhanced for. In yes. Normal for we defined it. We need to do in indexing. Yes. We defined it. But in hash form, it's a just a we just given the name we want and exactly. the data we want. Right. We have not defined it and we don't know it how it works. Yes. So in that in hash loop, there are other options also like in a, uh, indexing we want to gap two or three. No, no. So yes, that is that is a perfect implement. query. That is a perfect query. Enhanced for loop. So enhanced for loop 
or sometimes we even refer it to as for each loop all right so in enhanced or for for each loop so we need to understand that there is no indexing technique and this is very strict that from the first element till the last element i am going to do an iteration i will not stop i will just continue right so from the zeroth index till the n minus 1 index so you don't have index here you don't have the value of index 0 1 2 3 what is what but you know it is going to work in a sequence from 0 to n minus 1 now the first for loop on the line number 13 this is our version of the loop so you want you can put up a step you can say comma 2 you can say comma 1 but here you cannot manipulate so it's a strict read so i will mention here so it's a strict read operation from 0 to n minus 1 without any step here and there all right so and has for loop means easier on syntax but i'll go from 0 till the last so you use it when you know that you want to work from 0 to last but when you want some customization you need to use this line number 13 syntax so i think sort of that answers your question as well all right so anyone else guys queries here and there so shall we proceed towards closing the session then uh, before closing it yes yeah, sorry go ahead if anybody has a query it's not related to query i want to discuss here okay uh, nishant if if we have the uh, you know routers uh, data i mean ips uh, let's suppose we have 100 routers right all right great so in indexing uh, uh, i mean when when we set indexing for them uh, so we need to put 0 to 99 uh, right it will automatically be 0 to 99 for 100 elements okay okay so in 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 the data uh, in the routers uh, we need to put all 100 ips uh, and then it will print yes or, for an example let me show you let me show you for an example so as of now i have this data right so i'll just say comma six right and then i'll say one more comma and i'll uh, put up one more value so what is typically happening here the size is increasing now all right so the first of all indexing was zero to four now it became five and six as well right so there are two more indexes which has been added so if you run the code here so what you see is so you you are getting these uh, zero to six and here you are getting all these uh, uh, routers coming in right so indexing happens automatically for us so if there are 100 it means it's gonna go from 0 to 99 okay. so i mean anything other than this if you if you have any anything else as well no no thanks. Uh, Ishan, uh, do we need to uh, specify all ips on this um, uh, routers list or is there any way like uh, if i have ip addresses from dot one to till dot hundred yes so, you can create different uh, lists now right so you can create different lists router one router two router three you can you can uh, no, no, no. yes can, can, uh, my question is can can we uh, define range kind of thing here that from dot one to dot hundred uh, we have this list uh, that uh, are is you what, my question? Yes, yes, that is what I am saying. So we need to come up and uh, create separate lists for them because uh, this is all together. This is all together one single value, right? So when I say double quotes, so this is one value. One IP address is one value. So if you need to uh, say that from this to this, we got one list, this to that other list. So you can have list one, list two, list three, list four with separate, separate IP addresses. On the basis of ranges, what ranges do you want? All right, Saurabh, you want to come up with something? So before, yeah, there are two things. One, Deep is the new guy who joined today. Okay. Last time he's somewhere else, so he's not.